When it comes to creating a beautiful minimalist home, I find that most people struggle with how to combine storage and utilitarian solutions together with aesthetics and a minimalist design. Instead, we're limited to outdated storage solutions and impractical layouts, and I've yet to live in a house that makes sense. But if you are renovating or building your own home, you can fix these problems and create a home that is more user-friendly and that is more nice and beautiful to be in. And with a minimalist perspective, your home can be more eco-friendly, long-lasting, adaptive, and just more timeless and classic in style. So that's what we'll be talking about today, which is how to use a minimalist perspective when designing or creating your future home. The first thing to consider is of course the size of your house. I know this might be an obvious solution, but we just build houses that are way too big for our needs. The average house size in Sweden where I grew up is 84 square meter. Compare that to the United States where the average house size is 230 square meter, almost three times the size. A bigger house does not only mean more costs, but also more work. It means more cleaning, more appliances, more furniture, not to mention that most big houses I've been in, they weigh so much space in empty, dark, scary corridors and storage rooms and other rooms and functions that are just never being used. If you're renovating or if you're building your own home, I suggest going down the Scandinavian route instead, where you make room for beautiful open space areas, but keep any room, any bedroom, bathroom slightly smaller. Focus on communal areas, which will also give your home a warmer and more usable feel compared to having huge bedrooms, but not a lot of leisure space. The second second thing where I think people spend way too much resources and would benefit from a minimalist perspective is bathrooms. I grew up in Sweden on a farm in a fairly big farmhouse. It was definitely bigger than 82 square meters. We had a family of five and we survived with just one bathroom. Yes. <laughs> However, since then, I've stayed in many different houses and I also know a lot of my friends, especially over in the United States, have a ridiculous amount of bathrooms. The resources that goes into bathrooms are pretty insane if you think about it. Not only do you need a lot of electricity, you need water, so you need plumbing, you need tiles, you need fans. So there is such an unnecessary use of resources if you're building several bathrooms and you're not gonna use them. Not to mention, who is cleaning your bathroom? Think about minimalism when you decorate and design your bathroom. Why do you need more than one sink? It was like people started building houses and the businesses were like, oh, people have so much money. Let's tell them that they need two sinks, which means every family will buy two to four sinks instead of just one, which is so much more money and so much more resources you're spending. And I just can't help but think that these people who design <laughs> and build these houses and renovate them are not the people who clean the bathrooms in their homes, because then why would you have two sinks? <laughs> if we instead adopt a minimalist mindset and style to our bathrooms and smaller areas and just use one sink instead of two sinks, we actually free up more space. And I at least think space always feels more luxurious than what items you cram into there. For me, a minimalist and well-built home is a home that is nice and easy to use, that looks aesthetically pleasing, and that is comfortable to be in. And the more things we put in there, for me, the more cluttered and less homely it feels. The next point is longevity, because I think the most important aspect of minimalist design is to create longevity for your items and for your home. If we create a fantastic base, a minimalist home that is practical yet beautiful and high quality, it'll be very easy to adapt your style or even to sell your home if you would like to. Take for example the bathtub. Everyone in my grandparents' generation was told that to have a beautiful and luxurious home, you needed a bathtub. So all my grandparents have bathtubs in their homes. So my example here is that times have changed. Bathtubs are no longer considered luxurious, but often they're a nuisance, they're difficult to clean, they collect dust, and they use so much more water, especially in a time when we're interested in conserving water. If we try instead to adopt a minimalist mindset into the design and creation of the base of our homes, we won't need to change and adapt for new styles, especially when these ideas are being sold to us as conveniences, but they're actually just more work and more money. This way we can build and create homes for generations to come instead of homes that are quickly outdated after we've used them. Number five is built-in storage. Of course, when it comes to minimalist design, we need to talk about storage because one of the most or key aspects of minimalism is the lack of clutter, right? But for me, when it comes to built-in storage, it really comes down to function. If the storage is too hard to access or too hard to reach or too hard to use, it will actually add more clutter in your life rather than save you from it. 
I often see homes where storage is great, beautiful, built-in, super, super aesthetic, but it is so hard to reach. You need to lift something or you need to move something, and this just creates that small obstacle, but an obstacle big enough for you to not want to put things away and instead just leave them out because it's more convenient. I also often think that storage solutions make us buy more stuff. For me, the best home is a home that has ample storage, but where the storage units aren't crammed full of stuff. That's why, again, I think a smaller house with a smaller footprint is so much better because it sort of forces us to not fill the house with stuff. I think we can learn a few things from the tiny house movement and create less storage solutions and only create storage solutions that we actually need for things that we will actually use. Another point I think is really important is being realistic. I think one of the main culprits, especially for first-time homeowners or first-time home, build home builders, is that they design this home for someone that they want to be, someone they are yet to become. My favorite examples of these are outdoor hot tubs that never get used, outdoor kitchens, huge indoor kitchens, TV rooms, bathtubs. What all these buildings or designs have in common is that they sound great and they often look great, at least the first few years, but they require so, so much maintenance. I think most of us will cook outside in that expensive outdoor kitchen once or twice before we realize that's actually just more work and you might as well chop it and cook it inside, right? And I also feel like they don't make you happier, right? Because you live in your dream house and I've seen this so many times and you walk around through your beautiful garden and every time you have to walk through, for example, that hot tub that's just getting dirtier and dirtier for every time you walk past and it's such an effort to clean it, especially when you don't wanna use it because then you're gonna have to clean it again. So something I've learned is that I never want to buy things that will make me feel as though I'm not doing enough. Anything that will make me feel that I'm not cleaning enough, I'm not, exercising enough or whatever it may be, I don't want those things in my home. And personally, I often think these big, clunky, expensive items add a sense of clutter to your home. Every time I see a garden with a hot tub in it, it instantly feels more cluttered than if it's just a simple garden with a beautiful flower bed. The next point, and I've already said it a little bit, but that is smaller kitchens. Opening a drawer and just being bombarded with old appliances that you don't really use and you can't really get rid of that easily, it just doesn't feel great, right? And I'm all about our homes making us feel great about ourselves rather than the opposite. I definitely grew up in a household like this. We had 10 oven pans for I don't know what reason, there was no good explanation. The house I'm staying in right now, I've counted them because it drives me crazy. They have six whisks and at least 10 wooden spoons. You don't need these many things and I think it's much better to use things up until they break and it also makes for a lot less cluttered space. So if we can have these thought patterns or this minimalist concept or this minimalist perspective in mind when we design and build our homes, I think they will be so much more user friendly and beautiful. And what makes me angry is that it's so clearly a marketing ploy for us to buy things we don't need. And over and over again, people sort of fall or get pressured into this way of living. And the worst part is it doesn't even make them happier. It makes them unhappier. So I really wish we can break the cycle of consumerism and look at our houses to be perfect for who we are and not for some fantasy of who we don't even want to be. So I suggest limit yourself to a smaller kitchen and enjoy using it and not having to clean it as often. The other thing I find really important about a minimalist house design is natural materials. This might not be general minimalism as such, but it's definitely my perspective of minimalism, is that it also comes with this idea of longevity and being eco-friendly. Natural materials not only last so much longer, but they also look so much better. For example, if I buy my grandparents' old house, it'd be so much easier to renovate that house than it would be buying a modern, you know, cookie cutter house because the materials are not even, you know, they're not moldable. You can't change or repaint the kitchen cabinets because they're not made of wood. They're made of plastic or MDF or they have weird vinyls or wrappers or finishes on them. Same goes with the floor. You can't re-sand it. You can't redo it. You have to rip it up and put a new floor in. And for me, that doesn't really sit well with my ideas of minimalist design and also building and creating homes to last for generations. Natural materials look so much better because we can build the most beautiful base and then we'll put items in it. 
And that's the true, I think, benefit of minimalist design. Create a shell that is super comfortable, sustainable, long-lasting, high quality, and comfortable to be it. Then fill that home with things that make you happy, that express your style, or things that you feel that you need and want in your home. This way, if you want to move on or if you want to give your house to your children or your grandchildren, there is so much more opportunity to do so. And the last point that I think is really important when we're building and creating new homes is this idea of flow. From a minimalist perspective, flow is so much more easily created in a small space if we don't put too many things in the house. And obviously the same thing goes for built-in things like built-in storage solutions, kitchen islands, extra space, storage rooms, extra garage, whatever. Beat. <laughs> Think about how you move in a home and how you want it to feel spacious even though it's not necessarily huge. And even if it is huge, maybe you're renovating an old house, you want the flow to be there, right? You want to be able to take off your shoes when you get in from the door, you want to hang up your jacket, and you want to be able to, for example, reach a light switch straight when you come in in case you come in in the dark. Something we don't have a lot in Sweden, I think, because our houses are fairly small, but I've seen so much here in New Zealand are the dreaded corridors. The corridors here are cold, they are dark, you often have to walk to the other side of the corridor to turn on a light switch, and so many things like this that just really is the opposite of this idea of flow. The idea of flow is that the home is usable, truly usable. You don't really have to reach or you don't have to go out of your way to do anything, but the home is designed for practical living. And in a sense, I think practicality and minimalism has so much in common. And I don't want us to separate these two because I think in the modern minimalist movement, it can be easy to think that if it's too practical, it might be too ugly or too cluttered to be minimalist. But I definitely think that practicality combined with minimalism is true sustainability because we don't waste resources, but we also don't also pretend that something is something it's not, if you know what I mean. Because a minimalist home is really a home that will last for generations. It's a home that you don't need to renovate every five years. It's a home where you don't really need to repaint everything to get a new feel. It's a home that really has a great soul and then you can just adapt it and change it to however you see fit. Thinking of these things, especially in living in other houses, has really prompted all these new ideas for me. Had I not lived in this house, for example, and learned about the things I like and dislike about this house, I wouldn't have been able to apply those things to my dream house I hope to have one day. And I think that's the key point here is that when you build or design or renovate a new home, make sure that you have as much context and experience as possible. We don't want to design and build homes that we're then just going to sell because we really just did make a mistake. The last house we house sat in was their dream home. It was beautiful, but it was just put on the wrong side of the property. It was put on the dark shaded side of property, which you wouldn't have noticed in summer, but if you'd been there in winter, you would definitely notice it because <laughs> the horses got lots of sunshine all throughout the day, whereas the house got none. So things like this is really important. For me, having a long-term mindset and really knowing the land and knowing the house, that is true minimalism because we're building one house instead of building one house, selling it because it's not quite good enough. So we're gonna make someone else renovate it and then we'll build a new one correcting our mistakes. I actually think we can learn from other people's mistakes and I think experiencing other homes is probably the best way of doing so. I hope this video gave you some inspirations and some tips if you are wanting to design or renovate or build your own home. And please let me know in the comments if you've had similar thoughts and experiences and maybe you've even built a home yourself. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next week. Bye!